Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The text is Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through chapter 2, verse 3. The Reverend Michael Meyer is preaching. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. Our reading this morning is from the book of Genesis, chapters 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse, and it was so. And God called the expanse heaven, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit, in which is their seed, each according to its kind, on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit, in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm, according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seeds, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree that with seeds in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. And God God saw everything that he had made, and behold, 
it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. This is a lie that parents tell their children. We know it well, and we mean well when we say it, encouraging our young ones to ignore the taunts of others, and not to be discouraged if someone makes fun of them. But it's still a lie. Spoken by friend or foe, words have the power to hurt. They have the power to destroy and tear down. And of course, words can do good things too. Proverbs teaches us that a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a setting of silver. But far too often, our words are the opposite. You don't have to look any further than the political discourse of 2020. And it's easy to blame the inhumanity of social media that we say and write things because the people on the other side of the screen seem so distant. They seem not even real. But social media isn't the cause. In reality, it only reflects how far our culture has descended into divisiveness, into backbiting. The things that we would never have dreamed of hearing someone say out loud years ago are now publicly screamed in the face of our neighbors and posted for all the world to see. Add to this the empty promises of politicians, and you're left with words that at best are good for nothing, and at worst incites violence and hatred. In the reading this morning, we hear of a far different word, a creative a wonderful, powerful word that does exactly what it says. God says, let there be light. And there was light. Boom! No hemming and hawing. It's living and active. And it does not return void without accomplishing that for which it was sent. And it is good. Light to drive out the darkness, dry ground to bear fruit and spring forth with vegetation, waters to swarm with living creatures, beasts of the field and birds of the air, all created at the sound of his voice. And it was good. And then the pinnacle of creation, mankind, male and female, in the image and likeness of God himself, is given dominion over all that was created, And it was very good. And yet we did not think it so. Our rebellious will had other plans. In prideful spite, we seized the wondrous gift of liberty, thinking equality with God was something to be grasped. In foolishness, we sold our birthright and chose death, giving death dominion over all that was supposed to be ours, including ourselves. There is no greater irony in all of history. And then wonder of wonders. The same word that created all things in just six days became flesh and dwelt among us, spending nine months in Mary's womb. For 33 years he walked this very hall of death and breathed our poisoned air and drank for us the dark despair that strangled our reluctant breath. In the fullness of time, the word came to recreate that which had fallen, to make again a beloved, faithful and true, by giving up of himself and sacrificing everything. This is the word that now goes forth into all the world on the lips of those called to preach and teach. In the midst of an unclean and fallen world, the word brings life as the church again brings good news to men. The same creative word that called forth everything from nothing 
is spoken over and over in virtually every language. Not, let there be light, but it is similar. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And that word does not return void, but accomplishes that for which it was sent. And it is good. The word speaks again. I forgive you all your sins. It happens. You are free. And it is good. Again, the word says, take and eat. This is my body. Take and drink. This is my blood shed for the forgiveness of your sins. This word is for you. And it is very good. See what kind of love the Father has for you. Now, these later days are gray. Over half of all Americans say that today will be the most stressful day of their entire life. Nearly 80% fear some kind of widespread violence as a result of the election today. But don't let fear rule the day. Go and vote your conscience. Let your voice be heard. Speak for life, for families, for fathers and mothers. But at the end of the day, know that you should not put your trust in whoever is ultimately declared the winner. God will work his will for chastisement and for blessing. It is not for us to know which one will come to us tomorrow. Indeed, both may be worked at the same time. Simply know that the days grow shorter, and that final day grows ever closer. When all that we see around us will wither and fade, when Christ will return to judge the living and the dead, and a new heaven and a new earth will be established forever and ever. So do not be afraid. Turn off the news tonight at a reasonable hour, and then sleep well and be at peace in Christ. He is good, and his mercy endures forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us for chapel. Today we pray for the Reverend James and Peggy Krikova, who serve the Lord in the Czech Republic. The broadcast of chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org chapel.